Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Renatus Jam. My name is Jay Star. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Did you guys all see that? That was awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. We're Matt, official now. Matt, do not love turn me before I even get like I don't even get I thought a chance that was to. So cool. <sighs> Your name Watch was this. on the Watch screen. Watch this. Are you ready for this? What? Joining me as always is my fearless co-host, Mr. Matt Snyder. <gasps> he got it for me too. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> that was great. I did not know oh that was going to happen. Oh my gosh. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> We've got. That was like a. That was like a Chris Pratt moment. Chris Pratt's got like the best surprised little boy. <gasps> <laughs> That's funny. I no, yeah. No, usually people when they're comparing me to somebody, they think of Thor, but Chris Pratt's all right. It's yeah, cool. I don't see Chris. Anymore. You know what I get actually all the time. It's in in all seriousness, is that guy who played Bane. Oh. People have said uh, yeah, that I yeah. look like him and Tim Tebow, which I really should look up. I don't even know what he looks like, but must I, be a good looking. Gentleman. Just last night, I had another person say that, and I don't. I guess I don't know. Didn't he get kicked out of the NFL? Tim Tebow. No, a lot of people hated on Tim Tebow because he would do this prayer thing um, after a lot of his like good plays, touchdowns, oh, okay. that kind of stuff. He but, would say a like say a prayer. Yeah, he would take like a knee kind of thing right in the middle of the field. So it was like a symbolic <clears throat> kind of thing. Yeah, like he wasn't actually praying. I, I have no idea. I don't know. Anyways, all I just know is I had heard that he got kicked out or something. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It, yeah, he got a lot of yeah. lot of hate, but um, yeah, I I can't remember the guy who played Bane. I can't even remember his name right now, which is hilarious because he's a great actor. I like his and stuff. I could, yeah, I could, I could see it because he played in he played this UFC movie too. And That's right. Yeah, yeah, I like him. He played uh, another one with Shia LaBeouf, where they were like moonshiners, bootleggers, the, or something. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. He also did one with Chris Pine, where uh, they were both spies, and Reese Witherspoon was the girl that they were both going after without oh, realizing the other one was going after. I think I saw that. Actually. Anyway, yeah. that's Anyways. hilarious that I can remember all of those other the movies, games, but we can't, but remember, can't remember. Who but, he is. All right, for all of our tens of listeners online with us, if you can <laughs> remember the guy's name that we're talking about, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Just post it in the comments. Let us know so that we can. That handsome that devil, that yes. guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I I get like John Candy. Who do you look like, John Candy? What? Uh, it, he was funny. <laughs> 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 Didn't he pass? Is he is yes. he still alive? Yeah. Yeah, John Candy. All the good gone. ones go, man. All the good well, ones go. All the ones go. Everybody dies of everybody, <laughs> but like of comedians. I mean, oh man, like they all die early, and Mitch, they're the Mitch best Hedberg. ones. Mitch Hedberg is Rest a great peace. example. That guy is. Hilarious. Yeah, John Panette. John Panette was I a love funny that. guy too. Uh, there's a bunch. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of them. So. Uh, yes. John, John some Bennett that I'm not going to admit one. that I find funny. Oh yeah, there's there's a bunch na- where it's like I can't names. really drop that name. Yeah, I know, right? I can think of a few uh, names. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to, nice. you know. All right. So, most of their stuff is pretty bad, but they had some good stuff. So yeah, so, you know. Anyways. So let's let's get into what's new and exciting. Man, well, <laughs> there's a lot. There's so there's a lot. So we've got we've got. Uh, Coming up right now is the 4th of July. Yes, we're closed. And we are taking the day off. Yeah. At, to of, celebrate. Sort of. Yeah, we're going to take the day off. Did you say sort of? Sort of. Well, no, we're taking the day off. Yeah, we're taking the we're day We're just choosing to spend the day together. Yeah, we'll all be together, just not with you guys. Wow, that was hurtful. You Leave can. Co- they could out. come. Yeah, we're doing the Centerville Parade in Centerville, Utah. You want to come? So if you guys want to come, we're going to be driving the Freedom Wagon, and we're going to be tossing out. I will throw really, really good taffy. I will throw laffy, or they're not laffy; they're just taffy. No. I'll throw taffy so, at you. So this for is you. to you. This is this is taffy that we ordered from the Taffy Company. It's which is literally awesome. the supplier. To Hawaii of all Hawaiian taffy. Yeah. It's it's the junk. 
it that's, is that's it's the it's junk, the good guys. it's the stuff when you think saltwater taffy this is the, the stuff. this is the joneses right yeah. if you're gonna have to keep up with their and we the got joneses. 200 pounds of it to throw out we got a whole <laughs> it's bunch. so much it's we're just whole there's bunch. gonna be some little kids bi- piled under a, a giant <laughs> mountain of of Rappers. taffy yeah like we're gonna just be dumping boxes on them as we're oh, driving man. by so funny anyway so that that's coming up july 4th is coming up we've got kenya coming up yep you're going that was why i was like well there's lots because i was gonna say kenya but i you know i didn't want to make people feel bad because there's a lot of people not going there are a lot of people not going but this is a representation of the five star winner circle which which we have starting sooner than later yep so typically in years past we've done it from march 15th to March 15th. It runs for a year solid and it's, it's all personal sales, all direct sales, all of that. Yeah. Not no overrides and no, uh, event fees. None yeah. It strips, strips all of <clears throat> like, uh, you know, yeah. Event hosts and stuff from being able- right. So what's cool about that though, is that it, it creates an even playing field. Exactly. But what's even cooler about this really condensed time period is I think we're going to see, people that we don't normally see like you know when you do yeah, it across a I'm whole hoping. when you do it across a whole year <clears throat> it's just generally going to be the top producers exactly that end up at the top but but this time we're going to have people that are relatively new yeah competing yep yep and it's going to be awesome because yes. i think it's going to change who's i think it's going to shift stuff up so you know <laughs> don't say that too quick I misheard it when you said <laughs> it. You? I'm like, oh, there wait, is that... an F in there. Shift. Yes. Oh my god. Stuff. Okay, up. it's getting worse. <laughs> is it? I I emphasized. I enunciated. Yeah, but then you put. It doesn't matter. All right. So, oh, so uh, I... the the cool part is starting. <laughs> okay. I I believe it's September 1st that we're starting the next uh, it is five star winner circle to November and 30th. it's going until November 30th. Yeah, and then the actual uh the reward is happening before the national conference. Yeah. So it's going to be five days, four days, three days. It's going to be really four days cool up 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 there. Bob's place. And he's got this company that he's going to be bringing in that are going to have uh, professional snowmobile riders teaching us how to ride snowmobiles. Uh, Then we're going to take them into the back country. We're going to do some crazy exploration and, fun stuff we're it, gonna shoot on really we've got cool we got matt crook coming up to teach shooting yeah on bob's uh shooting range yep it's gonna be awesome yeah it really it really is gonna be i'm personally really excited for it um you know i think that being able to to just hang out with all those people and build those relationships but you know, I, I think it's something that everybody should be trying for. You got 60 days. Yes. Get them orders in, yep. in those 60 days. And, you know. Here's here's one thing that I've personally taken note of. And that is that every once in a while, you'll see people that in preparation for a contest, they'll, they'll sandbag sales, right? Yeah. Where instead of placing an order today, they'll say, hey, let's do it in two weeks in yep. order to get those sales in the system. It's a dangerous game. That right there. That's dangerous, what I was about to say. Dangerous because game. you've got a number of people who will back out of the sale. Yeah. In I, that like that I, time frame. I know this to be true. Right. Not, you know, like I I know it to be true. Um be you, I it's just kind of sales one oh one, get the order in. Like the moment you can get the order in, you should, right? Right, exactly. Don't ever wait and uh um, if you start pushing stuff off, oh man, I mean, I've, I, I don't know what it is about that too. Cause you know, you got people that want to buy the education, they've got the money or have figured out a way to come up with the money or something Well, and they're, they're in, but like, I'm just thinking of even situations where, where, uh, the order went in wrong or something oh, yeah. and then we've got to like yep. reverse it and refund it. And yep. then they want to put in the order correctly or whatever. And even in that time, that person was ready, willing, put the card number up, everything for the order. And then, you know, a week went by before everything could get straightened out. And the person called us and, blah, blah, blah. and then they just disappear. They fizzle out. And I don't know what that is. But, yeah, I don't know either. You know, they were ready to do it. Yeah. And then now they're not. Something changed. 
in their so life don't, or whatever. But don't run don't that hurt. risk. I would not do instead, it. Instead, instead, build like crazy. Build your team up. Build build your customer base. Well, build and, your lead and there's base. something like if you have a sale, a good you know big sale, you you make a ten or an eleven thousand dollar paycheck yeah. right before. Like I That's found a great that story. I yeah I found that like that momentum really builds upon itself. And you know um, I, if I go look at my own ICM generated income, and I were to go look over like a year, um, I had some really good years. And the funny thing about it is, is that maybe the first or like a, a six month chunk of it wasn't great. Like it wasn't where I wanted it to be. And then the next six months was huge and it was, is just momentum built up. And then, you know, yeah. man, when, when, you know, my people around me or whatever, find out that you had a five figure month, you know, um, it's like, wait, what, well, what are you doing again? Right. Right. Like, exactly. You know? And, and I can... I just know that that uh, the best, my favorite part about the five star winner circle, is that it is that even playing field. Yeah. So whether you're on day one or day five thousand, it yep. doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is what sales are being created. What kind of momentum do you have in your business? Yeah. And so yeah, I'm. I can't wait to uh, to see how this is all going to play out for people. I can't wait to see who lands in the top five. I can't wait to actually go and have our adventure together. And there's going to be some crazy awesome training that's a part of it as well. Anyway, I'm just, I'm excited for it. And so that starts September 1st, I believe. I'm going to have to double check that number. Well, that's what's on your board. Oh, if yeah, yeah. Yes. It's September 1st to November 30th. It was on the board yep. and there in your office. So, yep. yeah. I write stuff down so I won't forget it and then I forget it. So I got a really good visual memory. So if I see oh. it, I remember it. If you tell me, I won't. Okay. Weird, I know. I'm going to write more stuff down for you. All right. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> it's good to know. It <laughs> so works. Then, I don't know then, why, but it's just, before, yeah, it does. Before the leaders retreat, we actually, or the leaders, I just ruined it. I was going to make like this, oh, before the <laughs> five-star winner circle. Before the five-star winner circle, we have the leaders retreat. Yeah. And that one, you don't have to win any contest to be a part no, of. You just no. got to come and. Well, any goodness. one, three, or five-star qualified True. ICM is yeah. invited to come. Yep. And we're going to Costa Rica. Yes. It's going to be epic. It's it's oh going to be gosh. seriously cool. I'm excited for that trip. Like, <clears throat> it's going to be really, really cool. Now, we are currently sold out of our room block. And we're trying to get more rooms. So if you want to come and you've not yet reserved your room, all I can say is keep trying. Keep trying to log in. Try to go in every single day to get your room reserved because if anybody did fall out of our room block, a room would become available. Oh. Or if we end up getting more rooms contracted, they would become available. So keep trying. Don't don't give up. Yeah. It's worth worth doing. Oh, but it's, it's going to be trying. awesome. Worth that's, trying. So. That's, the Leaders Retreat is actually taking place August 19th to the 23rd. Yep. And, yeah. Oh, and... <clears throat> For those of you that have already booked your booked your room, make sure you get your flights like now and make sure that you book your flight into oh crud Liberia. Liberia. The, Liberia. Yeah, it's the northern western north western part of Costa Rica. Yeah. There's like four or five airports there. Yeah. It was Liberia, but didn't they change the name? They did. That's what I was just trying to th it's like I want to say it's San Juan. The I think the easiest thing is, is to go look at the hotel and figure out what airport's the closest because yeah. that one was the closest. LIB track. was the airport code. I remember. Yeah, that. it was LIB. Yeah. LIB. Yeah. So, but they changed that <clears throat> dang name. They did. They Maybe did. I could look it so, up. So there you go. You look that up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going here. Right. Um, coming up on this Founders Live, I should, you know what? I'm gonna tease everybody on the line here just a little bit. Bob and I actually sat down and created the theme for next year's national conference. And guess what? Because you are our faithful listeners right here on the Renatus Jam, I'm going to be the very first to let you know that you'll find out what that is if you attend the the regional training. Oh, <laughs> that's mean. So it looks like it's like the <laughs> Daniel Oduber 
What? Queros Airport? I don't know, man. No, that can't be right. Yeah. yeah. In in Costa Rica. Yeah, I'm looking in Costa Rica. It's on the west side. I'm looking at it. I don't know, but we should get the name. <clears throat> that is what it is. I'm looking at the same. Anyways. Say say the name again. Uh, It says it's the Daniel Oduber Queros. How do you spell Oduber? O-D-U-B-E-R. Because, I mean, even the, the it even says Liberia Shuttle and so, Tour still. So they Mr. haven't changed their name. Mr. So the Hiller, company. Mr. Hiller put on here, it's the Guana, uh, Guanacosta Airport. All right, that could be. Boy, this is going to make things really confusing. Yeah, I'm really not doing a great job so here. I this. need to. Right, like that says the the Daniel Oduber Queros. What is this? International Airport. L-I-R. Look at that. L-I-R, not L-I-B. Wow, we really phoned that one in, Matthew. You know. That was not awesome of us. Look, <laughs> we're still we're still figuring out this <clears throat> podcasting thing. All right. We've only been doing it for two years. Yeah. Oh, I man. I think a little over two years. I was going to say, what number are we on now? I used to keep track, and then I lose it, and then I keep track again and lose it. And I don't know. We'll, have to, we'll have to ask Mr. James. Yeah. And and find out what number we're on. We need to do something for 100. I think we oh, might even you know be what? there. So, no way. Well, in two years, there's 52 weeks a year. Obviously, yeah, there's some, some that we've, we've taken off. We've, so, yeah, so we're probably getting close, though. Dude, if we're getting close, I know what I want to do for the. I have a pretty good idea what I want to like. I podcast. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll, well, it'll be a big deal. It'll yeah, be a big deal. It'll be cool. All right. Um. So coming up on this Monday on the Founders Live. Yep. I actually have Richard Stock coming out to talk about the process of a leader. Oh, we're on episode eighty, so we have twenty more to go. Sweet. It's all those holidays, and th- <clears throat> there's been a handful vacation. Of times. I'm out of town, and, or you're out of town. Yeah. And, Yep. So uh we've got uh we've got Richard Stock coming out on coming out on the next Founders Live talking about the process of leadership. How you go from being a participant to being the the pace setter, right? Going from attendee to the front of the room. <laughs> I was gonna say pacemaker. <clears throat> pacemaker. Well, well that is I guess that it is, is what kind it of is, a pacemaker. Right? You're yeah. kind of you know, shocking yeah. people into action all the time. But no, but, but you're making into, the pace, man. Into setting the pace, into being the guy out in front basically leading by example and and he has done that over and over richard has yeah. and so he has put together this training that he's going to be coming out on the founder's life to share and it's going to be awesome it's cool and that takes place <clears throat> on four or at 4 p.m on monday okay 4 p.m mountain time utah time locked mountain in. time locked in I like it. I forgot. Miss, I didn't forget. Mr. Hiller's on the line, and he noticed that I'm wearing a Summit shirt. Summit is from Ohio. It's a it's oh, a of course car it parts. Is. It's of a car parts company. And uh, I actually grew up right down the street from these guys. Yeah. In uh, in, in the Ohio. <laughs> it's not weird. The it's the Ohio State. Not is that what it the is? Ohio. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it's like nobody refers to their state as the. That's weird. Yeah, we're going to the Hawaii for vacation. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways. Hang on. Now I'm like <laughs> thinking about it. I'm like running through all the states. Yeah. The, I don't know. I'm the gonna... Washington. No. <laughs> Nobody goes to the Washington. I'm just kidding. All right. So, um, you know, I think it's appropriate right now, before we introduce our featured guest for the podcast, to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> excuse me, to talk a little bit about what Renatus is and what the focus of not only this podcast is, but what the focus of the entire company is. You know, Renatus, even in our very mission statement, talks about our desire to empower people, to give people the tools, the training, the 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 best systems, the best leadership guidance that we possibly can to empower people to go out and create their own success. That's what we, we believe at our very core. And that's who we attract to the company. Other people that are accountable, other people that know that they're the ones who can go out there and start to make the momentum that they want to see in their own life. 
And that's what Renatus is all about. And that starts from the founder all the way down to the very newest ICM, the very newest customer of Renatus. We all buy into that vision of being able to take accountability and control of our own our own destiny, our own future, so that so that we can build the way that we want to build. And I love Renatus. I love what we do. I love how we are able to to really give people those tools and and give people the confidence to go out and make changes in their life, to go out and create more and be more so that they can in turn give more back. I I just love it. I love what I do. I love Renatus and I think that we just we work for the coolest company in the world, man. I agree. Man, ah, all right. So, Mr. Snyder, will you inv- invite? Will you introduce our guest. Yeah, I'm excited. This person is somebody that uh, that I not only uh, work with on a regular basis, but would call a dear friend, and have have very in, have very much enjoyed <clears throat> hanging out and working with, and and all the time that we you know we get together at leaders retreats and stuff and that sort of thing. And I've, yeah. I've quite quite enjoyed getting to know this individual. She is also somebody that has a very keen legal mind. But uh, one thing that uh, she has that I think oftentimes people in her profession lack is the understanding of the human part of <laughs> law, right? And so. And a sense of humor. <laughs> and oh my gosh, it's critical, <clears throat> critical to work here and especially with me if you have to have a sense of humor and so it's very difficult if one does not for me to 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 jive with that person and so she not only works well with people the law she also has a sense of humor so i'd like to bring out krista crook miss krista crook miss krista yeah. crook to the <clears throat> podcast you guys always make me feel so special well, yeah. it's because you gotta, you gotta like, I think face in the mic. We gotta oh, get her know, mic on. Don't, there we get, go. don't yeah. forget. Just, I'm never close enough to it. Put it right here on your yeah. face. No, yeah. and then yeah, you'll that's be too okay. close. Get, get no. comfortable with that mic. That's right. No, I don't yeah. like it right in my face. Yeah, it's all right. It's gotta yeah. be right in your face, or we can't hear <laughs> but you. I'm already loud. You can hear me. What? Huh? Stop. <laughs> I don't hear you. No, Audrey it's... tells me all the time she can hear me laughing all the way from upstairs. Does so she? to be fair, I am loud <laughs> enough. <laughs> Audrey, Audrey has like superhuman hearing. No, like, I'm just loud she enough. Can, Jay. She can. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what it was. One day she's like, "We're gonna see a shoe fly over enough? this from customer service." <laughs> yes. Bean you in the she's head. She's gonna get one of those like flashing lights. Like I'm on a call, you know, <laughs> quiet on the set. <laughs> Yeah, that would she, be kind of fun, though. She said that the other day. She's like, "What are you guys all laughing about up there?" And I was like, "I don't even remember." It's this. the dumbest stuff. Oh I mean, man! It's Sometimes always, it really is. It's just yeah, but it's fun. And at it's the same it's time. like it's like I don't even want to explain it because of how dumb it is. Right? You, <laughs> you know, feel dumber you know, for saying yeah, it out loud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like yeah, and for laughing oh that God. hard at mm-hmm. it. Uh, <laughs> so so Krista. You came out on the Founders Live this past Monday, and you did a phenomenal job of talking about how people can tell their story. And you did kind of a tandem training with Bob where he he talked about the effectiveness of facts tell story sell. Mm -hmm. And then you came out and you had a couple of examples from ICMs where you were like, hey, let's tell your story and then let's let's tidy it up and and make it even a little Mm -hmm. more compliant. So, so give us an example of that effective storytelling by telling us a little bit about how you met or came to Renatus. Okay. So my story is actually kind of cool. I think anyways, um, I, during all of law school, I always thought I was going to be a prosecutor. I won different trial competitions. You know, it was like, okay, this is my path. This is where I belong. Nice. And um, after that, I worked for a little bit um, as a city attorney and then went to the AG's office and was actually offered another city attorney position at the same time as I was introduced to Renatus. And I knew that it was Renatus that I wanted, even though it was completely outside of the realm. I, I, I felt something different. Like it was... It was one of those feelings where it's like, okay, this is home. This yeah. this yeah. feels right. 
And, you know, when I was younger growing up, I always knew that there were two things I wanted. And it was to go to law school and have a bunch of properties. So it like it fit. Wow. You know, like it worked. I didn't know that about the properties. I how, didn't either. I did. How young were you when you wanted to go to law school? Like when you were like, like oh, that's what 13, I'm going to do. 13, 14. Oh, that is. After reading a book. Wow. But that and, is crazy. That's, and that's like you knew. I knew, you know, shortly after that. And I always would tell my parents, I'm like, well, I'm going to have the house here and a house here. And they were like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this girl's a dreamer. That's <laughs> awesome. And look at you. You've got, you've got uh, properties in multiple states. I do. That's crazy. I know. That's and awesome. It's, but it's it's fun because I get to see, you know, the whole progression. Like I knew that that was something that I always wanted. And yeah. it actually wasn't until Renatus that I understood different avenues to get that. Yeah. You know, I always, you know, I always just thought, okay, well, you know, once I get further in my career, once I save more money, then I can start building upon that. And yeah. I had no understanding that there were other ways to do it. Yeah. And it's you're just, playing it's checkers. Blowing. Meanwhile, there's a chessboard. Yeah, you know, that, I, yeah, it, which is so exciting to me, and it, yeah. and and it's so exciting to teach my kids about it too. Yeah, even my eight year old. You know, last year so he was seven at the time. You know, I was explaining to my older children about it because they wanted yeah. to know. Well, why do you want to buy houses in different places? Right. And my seven year old at the time, he's like, oh. It's just a real life game of Monopoly. Yeah. And I was like, oh. yes, yes, it, it is. is. It is. I'm like, man, I got a smart kid. Yeah. <laughs> you need but to, I hadn't thought of it that way. You need to play cash flow. That's, that's the, that's yeah. that's the next. Because that, that, mono- that is like that would be fun to Monopoly with combined, combined with real life. That's really what. Yeah. yeah the I think they'd is. love that. The scenarios that are drawn out there are, yeah. are mm-hmm. real life. Great, yeah. great lesson. Yeah. And which is incredible to be able to give. To yeah. our kids. Oh, you yeah. You know, the next generation, yeah. like, especially with the cost of things and everything right now, knowing that I can at least give them that knowledge, that foundation for them to build upon, it's huge. Yeah, it is. Especially you know, a lot of kids have been And I don't want them house. to live at home forever. Well, there's <laughs> so. that. So it's selfish, too. <laughs> right? Selfish. Just a little bit. That's not <laughs> little, selfish. Little That's self-preservation. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's really funny because I realized just half a second ago that that uh, I got so completely engrossed in your story that I forgot that you're actually here to talk about how to tell a story. Oh, yeah. So that was very effective. Wow, look at that. Well, I got I, sucked I in. I, that was a fantastic <laughs> story. Like, I mean, you put that, t- it's just, yeah. It, it, look what you did to both of us. I know. We were just, you know, in that story, right? Like that's, Don't that's cool. Don't you guys forget it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but that's, that's the beauty of storytelling. You know, like I wasn't trying to tell a story there. I, I actually forgot too, <laughs> but it's when you touch on those things, the things that are really passionate to you and, and what have yeah. changed your life and what has done something for you, it, it reaches other people. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it is every single person here has a story. There's a reason that they came to Renatus and there's a reason that they're still here and that they're doing good things with it. Yeah. yeah. And when you share it, other people get to enjoy it too. So you've been with Renatus how long now? Um, since 2018. So I started in 2018 in a contract position, right? Just helping do some behind the scenes legal stuff, and then came on as a full time employee in 2019. 2019. Mm-hmm. How would you say the direction of the company is, um, like like regarding just compliance and all that? Because I know that you deal with a lot of compliance, and that's mm-hmm. why you're telling the story is a fantastic. Uh, teaching mechanism for a lot of people to understand how to be more compliant. But you've seen the direction of the company shift a little bit over the course of your tenure here. Mm-hmm. So how how would you describe the current direction that the company's headed? Like in a legal sense or just like overall? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we rock. <laughs> we do. <laughs> that All just right. sums it up. <laughs> we do. <laughs> No, She's it's, like, let me just give it to you straight. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, that sums it up. But facts that's are all there facts. is to it. We, you. we are the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's the facts. What's the story? Because facts tell story so. Story is everybody else sucks. <laughs> 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 just kidding. Oh. No, I, I love the direction that we're going. Yeah. Because not only are we on the legal front looking to do everything that we need to do and be one step ahead of any new laws, regulations, things like that to keep the company and our ICM safe, you know, the education top notch. 
but we're always looking for ways to better that customer experience. Yes. And it's huge. And you know, it's you you hear it time and time again that that first initial contact is where things fall apart. And and I feel like we don't have that problem like other companies do. And I think it's because of how we do things. We yeah. care about our customers. So I know that I know that you you run uh, a compliance software that basically goes around and looks for, you know, violations of our policies and our concepts mm -hmm. and then we'll notify them automatically and just say, Hey, you need to work on this and yep. how how uh let me try that again. How do you record the strikes that somebody has? I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was trying to point out, you know, just the, the compliance under your purview is a, it's like the rail guards on the highway, right? Yeah. yeah. They're there to keep you on the highway. Yeah, absolutely. They're not there to punish you or restrict you to the highway only. Yeah. That's a great example. No. Yeah. Yeah, that is. I love is. that example because that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be an advocate through my position, through the lens of the law of seeing and knowing what those regulations are. And knowing what our policies are helping, you know, because things change over yeah. time or people, you know, in sharing their stories, get excited and forget. Oh, yeah, this is something that I'm not supposed to put in or I'm supposed to add a disclaimer to this. Yep. You know, it, it's it's easy to to miss that or, yeah. or to have something that's just out there that you don't even remember is even out there. So I don't I don't keep track of, you know, things like that. It's it's my way of reaching out and helping them to clear that up. Love it. I love it because you're basically giving them an opportunity to be accountable mm -hmm. and then to fix it and then to move on. It's not like you sit yeah. there and just hold it over them. Yeah. No, it's it's teamwork. Yeah. Oh, love that. Makes so, the dream work. Makes the dream yep. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but that's cool. I You really are just out there to help make sure people get corrected if they. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's every aspect of life. Yeah. You know, we're always looking to better ourselves and to do things the right way and we're always going to need you know someone or something along the way you know some kind of knowledge or understanding yeah. to, to get to that next step and so that's my goal is to help offer that because sometimes you just don't understand you know why is this a problem you know i'm it, yes. it's the truth you know i'm telling oh, my yeah. story yeah and yep. you know which is great we just have to make sure that people know the right things, you know, so that they're not feeling like they're misled or, or anything like that. Things are disclaimed properly. Exactly. If you are, you what's, know, if... what's the most common oversight that you see that, that people could be aware of in telling their own story? Um, so the, the biggest ones um, are, are from old, old, old posts, you know, okay. back when there wasn't quite that defined, regulation, right, things right, like that. And right. it's, it's talking about wealth building and financial freedom. But, Those ones come up a lot. But as far as the posts that you see that are more current, you know, for somebody who's been in the business for six months or less, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do they need to watch out for or be aware of? What's a tip or trick when, when I want to tell my story, cause Scott Rowe gives these really great examples of, Hey, I haven't done a deal yet, but here's how I can tell my story. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I just started my real estate investing adventure. I'm so excited that I'm, I'm learning from these industry, industry leaders and professionals and you know, wish me luck. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. The, the disclaimers and things that need to be put in place are, are generally when you have done deals and you're giving specific numbers or you're giving numbers on what you've made as an ICM. Yeah. So if you're giving any kind of, of income claims out there, then that's when you want to go ahead and throw disclaimers in there so people know that these are your results, that you know there's no fear of them being misled, thinking, oh, well, I'm going to make that much money too, or I'm going to be able to do you know, a hundred deals or anything like that, just so that people have a clear understanding yeah. and then can make their own educated and informed decision. Gotcha. So you're, you're saying that this is not a get rich quick scheme. It's not. All right. So sorry. Some people might be well, able to have some great success. What's quick. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing is it's going to be relative to everyone. And, and that's why it's so important to make sure people, people understand and yeah. understand because some people are going to make money quicker than others yeah some are not going to make any at all well my dad always says that uh the the only way you're going to be a millionaire next week is if you're a millionaire this week yeah right and so i've heard him saying, say that before and i love that yeah and yeah. and so 
it, you know, it's, it's true. And you're not going to make a million dollars in a week just overnight, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, but, uh, when I think of get rich quick, it's always, I, you know, I know definitions get played with. I, so I never say that of course, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know that the person that's receiving it on the other end is not going to understand what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I avoid that language altogether, but, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, I, when I think of, uh, a lot of these individuals, you know, um, Dane Clark comes to mind, mm -hmm. you know, from roofing to, you know, to what he's been able the the yeah. empire he's been able to amass of, of yeah. properties, you know, in just such a short period of time. I mean, when did he start with us? Like 2017, was it? I don't know. I'd have to. So look that. yeah. And you know, I mean, that's a <laughs> relatively short period of time to be doing what he does. Yeah, that's right. true. That's um, a really good point. And where he's at in his life, holy crap. I mean, in and, seven and years or whatever. the nice thing about his story is not just the success that he has now, but knowing the things that he's gone through, you know, having that backstory, seeing the struggles that he went through, yep. you know, with his family oh, and, yeah. and having to, you yeah. know, not be able to provide for them for a while and, yeah. you know, all of the those different hardships, like that, yeah. that's what people can relate to. That's what people understand. You know, we're human. Right. You know, we all go through these kind of things and it leads us to where, where we end up. So, so instead of saying, Hey, I'm so excited. It's been my first real estate transaction and I made X dollars. How would somebody couch that more appropriately? So if they want to share how much they've made, um, they're definitely going to want to get a disclaimer stuck in there. Um, but it's going to be more of the backstory. You know, what led you to that? You know, what were you faced with that made you want to do real estate or to do deals? Right. You know, like what were the struggles that you went through? What were the conflicts that you had to overcome? Mm. You know, what was the <clears throat> epiphany moment? You know, what right. was that low that you hit where it was finally like, oh, I've got to do something different. I loved on the Founders Live when you brought out Drakkar mm -hmm. and him telling his story. Yeah. That was rough. Right. It was rough, and and yet you celebrate his, you know, turning his life around. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the part that I love about it is, you know, his life and upbringing was completely different than mine, you know? So I can't personally relate to the things that he's gone through, but boy, can I feel it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Yep. Like, that's huge. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's so, yeah, him and, uh, and Nixon coming mm -hmm. out and talking. Nixon... Yeah. Nixon had that post that he put online where he defined his why yep. that just killed me. Oh, oh yeah. Same. Yeah. That was, that got me too. Yeah. Right, I like to know? hide some of my emotions and that mm. one got me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah, I'm not the onion. I am. <laughs> I don't, there aren't that many layers to me. You know, I, I, I feel it. And yeah. I, I felt it with, with both of their stories as they're talking about the different, uh, tragedy they've overcome, the different mm -hmm. hardships that they've experienced. And I don't look at my personal life and go, yeah, I've had it rough. I've had it hard. I've had mm -hmm. it bad. And yet there have been opportunities to overcome, to persevere, to progress that other people might be inspired by, or at least intrigued enough by yeah. to think, oh, you know what? Yeah. I could probably, yeah, probably mm -hmm. do something as well. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah. And, and what a disservice not to share. Right. Right. I, I look at, so Matt, you recommended that I read the book, The Obstacle is the Way. Yep. And fantastic book. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It talks a lot about stoicism, talks about uh, how we can remove a lot of the emotional weight that we apply to different situations. And instead of being committed to a goal, we are committed to a process, yeah. committed to, to just moving forward and finding relative peace, happiness, joy in every situation mm -hmm. rather than rather than being consumed with fear doubt and and second guessing ourselves yeah um how would you apply that how would you tell a story you know about stoicism for example man um a story about it well how, how would, would you how would you inspire somebody in in 60 seconds with stoicism uh, well, uh, as far as like the book goes, I'd say it's, um, it's, it's life changing. If you can implement these concepts into your life, you know, if you, especially for me personally, 
you know, um, uh, about a year and a half ago, I recognized that I'm mentally weaker than I want to be. Like I'm more anxious or fearful of things than I want to be. And so I started to push myself outside of my own comfort zone and read books like, you know, the obstacle is the way and, uh, and embrace those difficult things instead of run from them. Right. And that book has taught me how to remove emotion, to look at a situation analytically or in a, in a way that you can then make a decision like it was somebody outside of the situation. Right. Right. Um, the book talks a lot about, uh, about that. And, yep. and so it's these, you know, life changing concepts. If you're willing to just do a little work and implement them. I hope, I hope all of you were paying attention to what Matt just did, because I don't know about you. I feel inspired to read that book. And, and I've already read the book. You know, I feel yeah. like I want to go <laughs> yeah. and do it again. But he, he built, he framed a situation where he said, this is the situation I was in. This is what I was looking for. This is what I found. And this is how it's helped me since then. He put all of those elements into one 90 second maybe yeah. story. Yeah. And, and yet that story caused a stir in me to go, Yes, I wasn't in that same situation, but yeah, I want to be mentally stronger too. I want to be able to be uh, less emotionally involved with decisions that I can't affect and and more motivated to affect those things that I can. And I hope that everybody, that you were all paying attention. The reason why, the reason why we asked Krista to come out today was all about telling the story. And I, I love hearing you tell stories because you, you draw everyone in everyone listens because they they go right along the path with you and matt you do the same thing where where you've had such different experiences in your life than than i have had right i i go along with you on that journey to where i can i feel like i can empathize with what you're feeling even though i've never felt that way before and and i feel encouraged to take some of the same steps that you took on your path to recovery on your path to progress on your path yeah forward because it's like yes i want to i want to get better and do more and be more as well yeah so cool Thank you. dude Thank you. it's you're more than just a pretty face as your dad would be <laughs> want to say in this situation Thank you. <laughs> matt told me the same thing last week i did i said you're not just another pretty face not around here right another pretty face i don't even remember what was it you, you solved something i don't I, even you remember you said something and i was like yeah that's really <laughs> profound actually like i should do that thing because I, I had I don't even remember what the issue was. But Apparently, that's oh. a new tagline around here. A new my, dad's, my dad's been saying it for years. <laughs> so to a, me, a new what? A tagline. Tagline. <laughs> this is a oh dear. Canada thing. I need to stop saying words with the letter A in them. Yeah. <laughs> she just. I'm gonna a. start. I'm gonna <laughs> <Stop> say. <it. laughs> I'm that gonna was st- an accident. That doesn't count. <laughs> I'm going to start speaking with an accent. Hey, you hoser. Yeah, you hoser. I'm out Don't here. you know? Don't yeah. you know? Yeah. Wait, let's see. Seize and desist. Yeah. Cease. Cease. I say see, it the American it. way now. Yeah, see. The American, the right way. I actually right caught way. it. I caught it the other day. <laughs> what you did said, I say the other day? No, you said it right. And oh, I was like. sweet. Yeah, I was like. I, oh, I actually heard that too. That. I must have been on the same call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we are finally wearing off on our favorite Canadian. Yeah. I'm, I'm growing up. I'm getting there. Well, <laughs> she's wearing off on me now. I'm saying bag and stuff. Bag. Now. Yeah. Bag. We, bag at the oh, store. that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of what the other one was that you used to say all the time. Yeah, there was there was another one. I yeah. don't know. But I get made fun of here, at home. Doesn't I'm matter where sorry, I'm sorry, Krista. <laughs> it's just what we do <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> How we how we operate. It's how we show love. You it's should our know love this. language is Americans. Look, I grew up in a world. All of the the friends and people around me, you know, um, if you were like a part of the group, then they would rag yeah. on you for things, yep. mm-hmm. right? Get bagged on. But if you were not a part of the group, you wouldn't be you wouldn't they wouldn't make funny right like so it was like a badge of honor like you were one of them if you were kind of teased and made fun of for a little i'm like, gonna create a like badge then. so yeah i've earned it yeah you know all of all of my <laughs> best mean a badge? <laughs> made fun of my little you know idiosyncrasies just things that are kind of quirky about me and i them right and we kind yeah. of go back but you know we had that friendship in place that it's it's like 
you, it's it really is coming from a place of love and you know it yeah. it's not oh, yeah. you know? I do know yeah. it yeah well and that's why it's fun <coughs> yeah. you know like that's why we all have we, such a good we time have a here. good time yeah. yes we do that's for sure like, everyone knows how to work hard but we know how to play and have fun yeah so if if uh if you just in in wrapping up the call here if you had um just one thought that you might want everybody to, to, you know, keep in the front of their minds to be thinking about or, or, you know, just to be percolating on, Mm -hmm. as we say here often, what, what would you want them to know about, about you and about your position and about how you interact with the Renatus family? You know, I think really just that, you know, attorneys can be there to be on your side. Yeah. You know, I, I've had time and time again where, you know, people were hesitant to, to reach out to me. And as, as we had more interactions, you know, they, they see that it's comfortable, you know, that I really am on the same team. I'm here to help. I'm here to guide and give some, you know, additional information, education, yeah. Yeah. whatever I can to help. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to, to hurt anyone or push anybody away. I, it, it genuinely is a heartfelt, let me help you. One of my favorite things to hear about people that have had interactions with you are are things along the lines of, wow, she really was nice. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yeah. That I know, I'm funny. super scary, aren't I? It's, that, funny. <laughs> it's not that you're scary, it's that the word compliance yeah. is scary. It, it is. is. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, well, it and, is. And how many people have typically positive experiences with I was, attorneys right. I was just and gonna say that. compliance? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they're difficult things. I think about any time that I've kind of, yeah, uh, like I, I've had to be corrected by some type of compliance department prior to working at Renata's, you mm-hmm. know, try, prior to being here. I had a compliance department that I did not get along with. At all, right? <laughs> and so I really that really get it. surprises me. Does it <laughs> surprise you? Yeah, they wanted me to read some. Uh, it was phone sales, and I was their top stick guy, to the script. And they wanted me to stick to the script, but it was very difficult to be the top guy and stick to the script. And mm. and I had to. It's a fine line because you know uh, you don't want to be saying anything that's like not true for mm-hmm. sure. And you, I don't like to mislead in any way. My biggest issue really was that dis- they wanted me to read like a two page disclosure. It would take mm-hmm. literally, it was like 14 minutes of going through. It was like two, I, two pages that, you, of those, do you know, those like uh, agreement? Yeah. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. Anyways, it they was, wanted you to verbalize into, that. I had to get like yeses. Like I would have to read through oh, the whole thing and then get to the end of something right. and say like you, do you agree to this? Yes. yes. And, and so it was very difficult because, I mean, they were just, they're buying, you know, TV, phone, internet services right. and stuff. Right. So my point is, is I just didn't get along with them very well. Cause I didn't want to read all that. So and the person, the person on the other end of the phone was like, yeah, I'm good with all this. Like, do I, I don't have time for this. I got to go or right. whatever. It's like, right, I don't right. want to lose the sale, you know, like, yeah. and so it's, yeah. That's, that's what makes working with you, Krista, so refreshing is that you create you're not hardlined to the point where you say mm-hmm. it has to be this way you're willing to say yeah let's work on an effective solution mm-hmm. that'll meet your need as well as be compliant yeah and i i love that i love working with you because you do you do give that that um guidance mm-hmm. yeah. without being overbearing or without demanding or anything like that and so it doesn't surprise me to hear somebody say, yeah, she really was nice or yeah. really easy yeah. to work with. Or I actually kind of like Krista, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. In well, fact, and I love hearing that. Sorry, I'm cutting you off now. It's but all good. That's my favorite part yeah. of what I do is getting to help people find that solution. You know, one that they're comfortable with and that works and, and still allows them to tell their story, to make that sale, to do yeah. things, but yeah. protect those people coming well, in at the same time. I don't think any of our people are intentionally misleading. No, people. not at and all. So there's the, they're not looking to tell them something no. that isn't true. No, absolutely not. It's just generally not disclosing you know, income mm-hmm. properly or something like that. Yeah. And so I, little things that are easy to fix. Piddly, I yeah. do love that we attract the caliber of people into Renatus that are focused on being effective Mm -hmm. honest accountable well it's a culture yeah i think Mm -hmm. you know it comes from my dad he's very much that way it's very important to him um 
and as it is to the rest of us. Yep. And I think that it just, it's difficult for somebody to, that's not that way to exist in this environment because, yeah. um, you know, our people value honesty, integrity. And the, the thing is, is that the money can be made like either way. Right. Does that make sense? It's not yeah. like you can't mm-hmm. make money yep. being honest or something, yep. you know, it's like, I think about all these, you know, mobsters like washing money and their illegal operations. It's like you have fake businesses you're washing money with. Why not just make a real business and make the money? <laughs> I guess they don't want to pay taxes, but my point is, is like you're, do the do amount not, of effort you're putting do not forth. Compare us to the mob. Yeah, you're right. All I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is, is that just do it right. right. Yeah. I'm not comparing right. us to the mafia. I'm just saying, just if you just do the work and do it right, you know, you'll make the same amount of money because doing it the wrong way is a lot of work too. <laughs> yeah. So it's like... <laughs> the the uh, Rich Eggett, he was part of the, the Make Profits Again Summit that Bob did. Yeah. He's the owner of Rockwell Watches and the Rockwell Racing Teams. And he, he said something that I love. He said, if something's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Yeah. yeah. You know, so get out there. Put, put the hours in. Pound the pavement. Go the miles. And and do just a little bit more every single day, and you'll find that you'll make that progress, right? That yeah. that aggregation of moderate gains. Yes, you know, get one percent better every single day, and then you're thinking you know, of that uh, that site that uh, yeah. Tour de France yep. coach yep. that worked on. Yeah, and took, yeah, what what country was that? He took he was from, in the UK. Um, he was in the UK. His name was Sir Dave Brailsford. And he he basically took the worst cycling team in the world by yeah. far. So bad that some companies wouldn't even sell their bikes yeah, to Yeah, they the didn't team. want their name <laughs> attached want, to this yeah. cycling team. And he, oh. he didn't implement some radical new training uh, idea or anything else. Instead, what he said was, all right, guys, we're going to get 1% better in every single facet of cycling. So in every single way, from, from little things like washing their hands – to big things like how they sit on the bike or how they, yeah. their downstroke, upstroke, how, you know, the yep. lubricant they use on the wheels. They got 1% better in so many different areas that they ended up going and, and winning not only one Tour de France, but like eight. And since 2008, I believe, don't quote me on that, they've taken the most gold medals in cycling every single Olympics. That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sir David Brailsford. Brailsford, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's a cool story, and it's true. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The the principle applies across the board yeah. with yeah. so many things. To and everything. It, yeah. It's just that aggregation of modern gains. It's getting one percent better. If you got one percent better every single day, you'd be thirty four times better in a year. Yeah. That's insane. That's huge. Yeah. That's insane. So just get 1% better. Go out there and do 1% more today than you did yesterday, and you'll find that over time you will not only just build up the tolerance like what Matt was talking about earlier, that mental fortitude, but you'll also find that you're building momentum in your your business and in your life. And you're going to you're going to find more joy, more success, more more accomplishment in doing those things. Yep. Ah. Krista, thank you for being our thank featured so guest today. Yeah, thank you for fun. telling your story and for being an example of, of how we can all aspire to improve and get better. And also also giving everybody the comfort of knowing you're on our side. I am. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're a rock star. All right. On behalf of myself and Mr. Matthew Snyder, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Andrew James, who's been our line producer for the show. I also want to remind everybody that the reason why we're not us rocks is because of the people who are associated with it. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday. We're not us rocks. <laughs> <laughs>